Oh, 
Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. We, we have come to return all glory to you. We have come to worship you this evening. We have come to also learn at your feet this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our lives all that you are doing, even in our community here in Dundee, all that you are doing, even in Scotland and in the UK, we say, Lord, may your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word, we pray by your spirit, Lord, breathe upon your word. And Lord, let there be understanding, let there be transformation, even in our hearts and in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we hide behind the cross this evening. And Lord, we say, Lord, may your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great. Please, I'll be happy if you can confirm that you can hear me loud and clear by just giving the thumbs up sign. Uh, for those of us who are online, just give a thumbs up sign just to prove that you can hear me 
loud and clear. God bless you. I want to start by appreciating the Lord for this great opportunity and also for thanking our pastor, Pastor Sharp, for giving us this opportunity to share God's word this evening. Praise the Lord. I just check in favor. Can people hear me clearly? Yes, they can. Are there thumbs up signs? If, if there are thumbs up signs, then it shows that they can hear me very well. Great. All right, so we'll just move into it. Um, today, we're going to be looking at a very interesting and unique topic. And please, I'd like each and every one of us to, to pay very close attention. I'd like us to also participate as much as possible. And I'm sure that the Lord will help us this evening. The Lord will teach us and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Now, our topic this evening is don't limit God. Praise the Lord. Don't limit God. Praise the Lord. And we're going to turn our Bibles very quickly to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. And we would read from verse 8 to 9. Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 8 to 9. And the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Praise the Lord. Now, before we go into uh, the teaching for this evening, I'd like to welcome each and every one of us once again. Uh, for those joining on Facebook, I want to say a big welcome to you. And uh, for those joining via Zoom, I also want to say welcome to you. This is RCCG House of Praise Dundee here in the UK, and we're happy to have you join us this evening. So from where we read, you would discover that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are also not our thoughts. So God will not think like a man. The Bible says that God is not a man that he would lie. So God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Praise the Lord. God uh, has great plans for each and every one of us. His plans are beyond human comprehension. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that, the Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I have for you. Can the Bible, can we uh, flip to Jeremiah 29, 11? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Another translation puts it to give you an expected end. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. So God's thoughts for us, they are beyond human comprehension. They are wonderful thoughts. They are mind-blowing thoughts. They are thoughts that are geared towards ensuring our safety, you know, our prosperity, our healing, our fruitfulness, they are the kind of thoughts that God has concerning us, thoughts that are geared towards our longevity. Praise the Lord. So God has great thoughts for us, you see. But the truth is, sometimes we as human beings, we can limit God in our own way. And we're going to be looking at about, hopefully, if time permits, about eight ways whereby we as human beings can limit God. And I'm sure that the Lord will teach us and we will not fall into that category of people who would limit God from uh, uh, finding full expression in our lives in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, just one very short story before we go ahead. In the book of Matthew chapter 20, from verse 20 to 23, Matthew chapter 20, from verse 20 to 23, you will find a woman, the mother of uh, James and John, James and John, Zebedee, praise the Lord. That woman took her two sons and they went to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. And they told him, they said that, she, so she was telling Jesus, she said, 
she would want her two sons to sit one on the left hand and one on the right hand of Jesus Christ in glory. She would want them to inherit that place in glory, one on the left and one on the right. And Jesus told the woman, he said, you really don't know what you are asking. He said, can they, even if they are going to sit on my left and on my, even if I want to grant it, can they drink of the cup that I'm going to drink? Or can they be baptized with the baptism wherewith I'm baptized? And the woman and the two sons answered and they said, yes, we will be. You know, anyway, Jesus said, anyway, it's not for mine, it's not mine to determine who will sit on my left and who will sit on my right, or is the father who will give that to whom it is prepared for. Praise the Lord. What this woman did not know was that when Jesus was to be crucified, there were two people, one on the left and one on the right. And those two people, they were thieves. You see? And one was going to make it to paradise and the other one, no. So the woman was asking for something humanly, based on her own human limitation, but she didn't know the consequence of what she was asking for. She didn't know the magnitude of what she was asking for. And this is how many of us operate uh, today. There are things that we request from God. There are things that we ask God for. And sometimes those things are mediocre compared to the plans that God has for us. And that's why it's very important to understand and to know the will of God for every area of our lives. Because we may actually be asking for something that may lead to our own destruction uh, in a way, of, I mean, thinking that we are actually asking things that are in line with God's will. We may be asking things that may lead to our own destruction, but I'm sure that the Lord will help us. The Lord will uh, uh, open our eyes. The Lord will help us to, to, to know how to pray, to know how to ask, and to know even what to ask for. And to not be the ones to limit God from finding full expression in our lives in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to be asking a question like our pastor would do uh, every time he teaches uh, on, Thurs on Thursdays like this. He would throw a question and expect people to respond. So today we're going to be learning from that and we're going to be doing that as well. So I'm going to be asking, can we... Uh, in the chat box, on Facebook, on Zoom, can we just type down, can we type down different ways whereby people, believers and non-believers, can actually limit God in their lives? Mm -hmm. I'd like us to type down what we, what we think, mm -hmm. different ways that believers can limit God from manifesting fully in their life. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to type it down. Uh, so that we can be sure, number one, that people uh, have come ready to learn and also to be sure that people are actually present in this teaching this evening. Praise the Lord. So let's type down ways in which uh, believers can limit God from manifesting or from finding food, from, from expressing himself fully in their life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's type. I can see some people are typing. How can one limit God from fulfilling his will in their life? All right. And people, please, when you see, please help to read out some of the things that people have written down. Yeah, from there, that's All right. They make God family. And being doubtful. Wonderful. They make God plan B and being doubtful. So people that make God plan B, they are actually limiting God from manifesting himself in their, in their life. And also people who are doubtful, in a way, also limit God from manifesting himself in their lives and through them. Praise the Lord. I think someone else has commented. Yeah. Uh, they limit God by... They get too comfortable with a certain level of blessing and refuse to see God's bigger plan. Mm. And then to be, uh, someone said they exercise fear. They exercise fear. They exercise fear. So people that exercise fear, they also limit God. 
And uh, Sister Joy said, they, they become too comfortable with where they are. They become too comfortable. Okay, I think someone else has put in something great. I think don't, it's very interactive. Don't say they limit God by drinking too much alcohol. They limit God by drinking too much alcohol. You know, the Bible says something in the book of Galatians. It said, be not drunken with wine, bearing in excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. Praise the Lord. So they drink too much of alcohol. This person is saying, so I wish I knew what, I had a, a better context because what the person is saying is deep. So when people drink too much alcohol, they get influenced by something else that is not the Holy Spirit. And then they limit God from manifesting himself in their life. God bless you. Is there any other comment? But well, that's all for now. Great. All right. So we've actually said most of the things that are here written in my notes. And hopefully in another 15 to 20 minutes, we'll see how um, we can discuss some of the things that are penned down. So I've written eight of them, but I'm not concerned about running through the eight. We trust God that where the Holy Spirit wants us to stop and where time permits us to stop, we will stop there. So one way that people, believers, can limit God from manifesting himself from fulfilling his promises in their lives is one through doubt, like someone mentioned. Through doubt or lack of faith, like someone mentioned. In the book of John chapter five, John chapter five, you would read about the man who was lame and he was sitting by the pool of Bethesda. The Bible records that that man had sat there for about 38 years. The man was limited for 38 years. And even when Jesus appeared to help him, Jesus asked him that, how, I mean, how come, I mean, what is going on? How come you are here? The man manifested or expressed that doubt, expressed that unbelief, expressed that lack of faith. He said, no man is even here to help me. No man is here to support me. So most times when we doubt, when we express lack of faith, we are actually limiting God from manifesting himself in their lives. That man at the pool of Bethesda, he put his trust on the arm of flesh as against the spirit of God. Now the big question is, how many times as believers have we put our trust on man rather than God? Sometimes we put our trust on the system rather than God. Sometimes we give up on our circumstances because the system does not permit it. But you see, there is a God who has the heart of kings in his hands. And like the rivers of water, he can turn it whichever way he wants to. There is a God that controls the system that we operate by. And that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a God that can change times and seasons. Who are you putting your trust on? Is it on man or is it on God? When you put your trust in man, you are also expressing lack of faith in God. But I'm sure that the Lord will help us to put our faith in him in the name of Jesus. Another example you will find in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7, from verse 1 to 2, and then from 16 to 17. And this one, we're going to read it. So um, I'll be happy if someone who is there can read with a very loud voice if you are there. But if not, okay, yeah, is anyone there? If you are there, please read with a very loud voice. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 2. And then the same Second Kings 7, but then from 16 to 17. So just four verses. Praise the Lord. If you are there, please feel free to unmute your mind and read. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh oh. Shh. Um. Chapter seven, uh, verse. Sorry, verse four says. Um. Then, Elijah said, "Hear the word of the Lord." Thus says the Lord: Tomorrow, about this time. Excuse me, sorry. 
um, you're correct. You're correct. The yeah, I'm, the, I'm just trying to increase the funds. Okay. The, thanks a lot. Tomorrow, about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two mm. seeds of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Mm. Yeah. So an officer on whose hand the key leaned, the, the key, the king leaned, leaned, answered the man of God and said, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, mm. could this thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but will not eat of it. Mm. Mm. And you can move to verse 16 and 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Verse 16 says, then the people went out and plundered the tents of the, of the Samarians, of the Syrians rather, for a seer of flour was sold. So a seer of flour was sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Verse 16. That's verse 16. 17. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, but the people trampled him in the gate, and he died just as the man of God has said, who spoke when the king came down to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you see, God had a plan and a purpose for Israel at that time. And God had used the man of God, Elisha, to give a word of prophecy. And there was a man who doubted, who tried to limit God. And somehow we can see from this story that when Elisha prophesied and said, this is going to happen, the man said, no, how can this happen? Even if God wants to do it, how will it even happen? And it happened that Elisha told him that you will see it with your eyes, but you will not partake of it. And this man, it got to that period where the prophecy came to pass. That man somehow, I don't know whether by coincidence, the man was made to be in charge of the gate at that time. See? And because he didn't believe that this was going to happen in the first place, because he tried to limit God, he himself was limited. He himself was destroyed. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Sometimes when we try to limit God, it can backfire on us. And that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So through doubt or lack of faith, you can limit God. The second way that one can also limit God or try to limit God in their lives is through lack of perseverance or what I've called laziness. Praise the Lord. Lack of perseverance or laziness. If you turn your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 13, and if we read from 14 to 19, 2 Kings chapter 13, I would read from 14 to 19. The Bible says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, 15. And Elisha said unto him, take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows, 16. And he said to the king of Israel, put your hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hand upon the king's hand. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Afek till thou have consumed them. And he said, take the arrow. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. 19 and the last. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria or try. Praise the Lord. Sorry, I was reading from the King James Version. 
So the king went to meet the prophet Elisha. And that was because they were under siege by the Syrians. And he was crying, he was worried, and he met the prophet in verse, verse 15 or verse 14. He was crying, he wept over his face. He was crying, he wept over his face. And he asked the prophet to help him, in other words. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? Sometimes when we cry to God about certain things that we require in life, we cry to God about certain promises that God has probably made to us. We cry to him about the manifestation of those promises. And then when God sets the ball rolling, we ourselves are the ones that will stop halfway. You know, Paul was speaking to the Galatians and he was using very strong words. He said, oh, foolish Galatians, how do you expect, if I paraphrase, how do you expect to finish what God has started in the spirit? How do you expect to complete it in the flesh? Praise the Lord. So there are times when we would have started off very well. You know, the prophet told Elisha, or the, sorry, the prophet told the king, Prophet Elisha told the king, he said, smite the ground. And the king smote the ground three times and stopped. And the prophet was upset. He said, you should have gone far, maybe five times or six times. Then you would have completely defeated the Syrians. But you did this only three times and you stopped. So laziness or lack of, of perseverance can actually limit God from fulfilling his uh, 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 purposes in our life, from finding that full expression, from expressing himself fully in our lives. I pray that God will not stop halfway in fulfilling his promises in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, this is very important because sometimes you see some people, they begin to um, reflect the glory of God. They begin to manifest God's glory. But then after a period of time, you begin to wonder, I thought this person started off manifesting God's glory. How come the person is nothing to write home about again? How come the person stopped halfway and it looked like the later state of the man is now worse than the former? How come? It's probably because they limited God's hand from finding full expression through laziness, through uh, a lack of perseverance. Wherever God lifts you up to, whatever height God lifts you to, right? By the same wisdom of God, there is a higher realm that God can take you beyond that point. You see, and God would always want you to rely on him. God will always want you to seek him more. God will always want you to seek out information. God will want you to exercise your strength in showing that you believe in him and that you are thankful for where he has uh, lifted you up to. Praise the Lord. So I'm sure that the Lord will help us, that we will not be lazy, even as God begins to manifest himself, himself in our lives in the name of Jesus. The third way in which people limit God in their lives is actually through greed. Praise the Lord. Through greed. Now, when I say greed, who comes to your mind in the Bible? Now, there are a few people, there are many people, but there are a few people that I'm sure that your minds would, um, would uh, ponder on. Who can type in the chat to tell me, when I mention the word greed, who, who comes to our mind? Praise the Lord. Okay. Has anybody typed anything? All right. So the person that comes to mind for me, okay, someone said Geazi. Oh, Joy, Sister Joy, wonderful. That was what I wanted to mention just now. That was the person I wanted to mention. Geazi. Now, if you realize, Elisha served Elijah, right? And Geazi served Elisha. Am I correct? So if Elisha got a double portion of Elijah's anointing, Gehazi was supposed to get how many now? <laughs> Someone said quadruple, right? So he, he was supposed to be an exponential 
uh, uh, increase in terms of the anointing of God. So you realize that the prophet, the man of God, Elisha, died with that anointing such that even when he died, his bone could resurrect a dead person. Now that anointing probably was meant to have been transferred to Gehazi. And you see, there was a time I did a study and the miracles that Elijah, Elijah did, Elisha actually did double, like literal double, praise the Lord. So Zeazi was supposed to do double of what Elisha did, which would have been four times of what El Elijah did. But what limited God in finding that full expression in, in Gehazi's life was greed. Second Kings chapter five, verse 27. Second Kings chapter five, verse 27. The Bible says that the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee. This was Elisha pronouncing a, pronouncing a curse on Gehazi. And unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. This was supposed to be a man of God who ended up becoming a leper. Praise the Lord. And the reason was greed. Greed comes from the place of loss. And if I break it down a little bit, there are times that because our destinies are different and the purposes uh, of God for our lives are also different. But sometimes we get distracted through greed, through loss, loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes. God has an agenda for you. You are on your journey, but now you are admiring someone else who is on a completely different journey from yours, even though it looks similar. You are admiring that person's journey. You are wishing to be that person, not knowing that God's dealing with men are unique. And so in other words, you are limiting yourself by reason of that lost, lost in wanting to have what the person has or wanting to be who the person is. Praise the Lord. Greed can actually limit God from finding uh, a room to really manifest himself in our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, the, the fourth way that we can also limit God from finding expression, from manifesting himself fully in our lives is through fear. Someone mentioned it as well. Fear. And this one, we won't spend so much time here. In the book of Job chapter 3, verse 25, Job chapter 3, verse 25, you will see the Bible says something there, that for the thing I greatly fear, for the thing I greatly fear has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Like I said, we won't spend so much time here. Fear, someone tried to uh, paraf like give uh, a meaning to the acronym, F-E-A-R, is false expression appearing real, fear. There are people, there are a lot of books that haven't been written. There are a lot of heights that haven't been attained, right, because of fear. It's, 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 it's better to try and fail than not even to try at all, praise the Lord. And the reason why a lot of great destinies are limited is because of this element called fear. And the funny thing about fear is that when you uh, manifest fear, when you express fear, that negative thing that you were afraid of will tend to happen to you because fear is like the opposite of faith. So when you, when you demonstrate faith, that which is not existing, you call it forth. And you, you see, the Bible says something that I think uh, in the book of Romans, when God was speaking about Abraham, that he called those things that be not as though they were. So it, it is in the nature of God and in the nature of faith to call those things that be not as though they were. The same way fear manifests as well, but in the, in the opposite. So when you demonstrate fear, that thing you are afraid of would end up happening. An example, in those days, when you, if I'm not even in those days, it happens even in real life today. If you have an injury, no matter how small the injury is or no matter how big the injury is, if you are afraid that, okay, let me, uh, let, me, let me keep myself in such a way that nobody would touch that injury to cause me pain, 
Praise the Lord. You realize that the more you are afraid of people touching it, the more people will touch it. How many of you agree with me? The more you, uh, do people understand what I'm saying? The more you <laughs> are afraid of, the more you are careful for people not to touch that injury, that sort of attracts people to even touch it. Praise the Lord. It's just a natural phenomenon. And that's the way fear works. That which you are afraid of tends to happen. And that's why we must trust the word of God. Whenever there is fear, whenever you sense fear in your heart, you should tackle it by faith. You should tackle it by the word of God. Whenever you, um, uh, uh, whenever you um, entertain that thought of fear, that fearful thought, what you, you, what you should do is look for a scripture that negates that uh, evil thought. Because these are ways that the, that the enemy uses to limit people from enjoying the fullness of God's promises for their life. I'm trusting the Lord that God will eradicate every spirit of fear from our hearts in the name of Jesus. There are people that are afraid. They'd be like, oh, ah, I'm just, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get married. Some people are afraid. Uh, when I get married, I don't know if I'm even going to uh, give birth. And what they find out is that those things begin to manifest in their life. But I'm trusting God that the Lord will help us to overcome such in the name of Jesus. I'm guessing that my time is almost up now. How many minutes do I have? Five minutes. So let's just take one more. How many minutes? Five minutes. Okay. So let's just take one more before we close. Now, this last one is really important. One other way, and this will be the last way that people limit God in their lives is through bad company, evil communication. Your company, the company you keep, can actually limit God from fulfilling his purpose in your life. Abraham kept the company called Lot, who was actually his nephew. For as long as Abraham and Lot were together as company, God did not show Abraham his great plan that he wanted to manifest in Abraham's life and in Abraham's generation. So the Bible says, I think in the book of Genesis 13, verse 14, that lift up your eyes now from the place where thou art to the north, south, east, and west. As far as your eyes can see, I will give it to you for an inheritance and to your seed afterwards. But God could not make this promise to Abraham until he had separated himself from law. What company, what kind of people are you keeping as your friend, as your company, as your ally? Also, you find an example, which was also King Jehoshaphat and Ahab in the book of 1 Kings 22, from verse 2 to 5 and 29 to 35. 1 Kings chapter 2, chapter 22, from verse 2 till the end. Jehoshaphat, a man of God, became friends with Ahab. And Ahab said, ah, how about you join me to a war? Let's go and fight against these people. Ahab was one that God was angry with. He was a sinful person. He was the husband of Jezebel. Whereas Jehoshaphat was a man of God. But the man of God mixed with uh, an unbeliever. And uh, he almost lost his life. When they, went for, when they went to that battle, his unbeliever friend told him, why not dress like me for this battle? And Jehoshaphat, man of God, said, okay. And he dressed like the unbeliever friend, Ahab. You see, when you keep uh, ungodly company, somehow uh, there is a rub off. So your godliness may rub off on the unbeliever and the unbeliever's ungodliness may rub off on you. And so when God wants to express himself fully, he, he is struggling to find the portrait of Christ that he wants to bless. He's struggling to find the person that can accommodate the kind of blessing that he has prepared for, you know. And so you tend to limit God based on your association. And so that is really important. We need to check ourselves. Who are our friends? Who are the people we listen to? How often do we listen to godly counsel? How often do we keep godly relationships? In fact, the truth is, you may even have friends from, sorry to say, you may even have friends from the church, or you may be going, you may be headed for two different directions. And you need to be careful because based on your company, a friend will always want you to remain at this level. 
That's the truth. And that's why when you are friends with someone and you write an exam and your friend comes first and you come, let's say, fifth or sixth, you know, you would almost feel bad. Not because you didn't come first, but you would have preferred if your friend came sixth or fifth, similar to you as well. How many of you understand what I'm saying? So because as friends, it's like a yoke. You want to flow at the same pace. Praise the Lord. So you must always be careful to be sure that the friends you keep are people who are also on a journey. And their journey is in line with God's will and God's purpose for their own life, such that you can also focus on your own journey based on God's plan for your life. I pray that the Lord will help us and the Lord will continue to illuminate these words in our heart in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to just pray a few prayer points and then um, I would hand over. Let's pray just one prayer point and let's ask the Lord that the Lord should help us not to limit him, not to limit his work in our lives. We talked about lack of faith. We talked about doubt. We talked about lack of perseverance, laziness. We talked about greed. We talked about fear. We talked about bad company. Oh Lord, please may I not hinder your manifestation in my life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the thoughts, I know the plans that I have towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future, to give you an expected end. Lord, may I not limit you from manifesting yourself in my life, from manifesting yourself in my family, from manifesting yourself through me in my generation, in the name of Jesus. A lot of us have great callings in life. Is it possible that we may be limiting God from finding full expression through us? Is that even a possibility? Let's pray and ask that God should help us by his grace. May we not be a limited, may we not limit God from fulfilling his purposes through us and in us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your precious name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful evening. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I pray that because you are part of this broadcast this evening, your faith is rising and it will swallow every doubt and fear in the name of Jesus. The Bible says it's not the hearers that are justified, but the doers. Let's go back and check our association. But because you're associated even with this body of Christ this evening, I pray that iron will sharpen iron and the good things that are happening will spread around each and every one of us. Let's commit the servant of God, God has used this evening, even to speak the very word of God, Let's ask that God will water him. The Bible says that he that watereth shall be watered. Let's ask that the virtue that has gone out of him, that the Lord will replenish. And let us also ask that the glory of God will be fully manifested in his life, in his family. Nothing will short chain it in the name of Jesus. And as we are praying for him, I believe we are praying for ourselves that we will not short chain ourselves. We have been taught this evening, we have an unstoppable God. Nobody will stop us. We will not stop ourselves. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In our usual manner, we want to um, appreciate the Lord with our substances. The Bible says he gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. It's offering time. And as you're giving your offering, I just want you to speak to that offering and appreciate God for that substance. Ask for the Lord's blessing upon that offering. Father, we thank you. Thank you because you give bread to the eater, seed to the sower. Thank you for this offering that your people are giving even this evening. We ask that you bless it, that Lord, you will multiply it, and it will be used for the propagation of your kingdom. That Lord, as we give this offering, indeed, our treasure in heaven will be on the increase. Our heavenly account will be on the increase in the name of Jesus. And we also pray that by this offering that your people will be separated from lack and scarcity in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless the givers and those who would have loved to give 
but do not have, we ask that you also provide for them and teach them to give. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The evening is well spent. Um, it's announcement time. We meet here every Thursday. Um, for now on Zoom, six to seven is one hour, quality hour in God's presence. And I encourage you, thank you for joining today. We ask that you also be here next week, same time, by God's grace. Also on Sunday, we meet 9 a.m. for the workers at, on Zoom, and then the main service starts at 11, right here in the church auditorium, 145 Kingsway East, Dundee. Please be part of it. Invite your friends as you come. And particularly next Sunday is a special Sunday. It's Thanksgiving Sunday. Please don't miss it and come with your friends. This Friday, we are having a video prayer. The Bible says we should pray without season. And as a local church, we are committed to praying. And so this Friday, the last Friday of the month, we are going to be meeting here also by 10 p.m. And shortly to um, slightly after midnight, Please be part of it. Come and join us as we lift up our voices to the almighty God. We thank him for the past month and committing the new month into the mighty hands of God. On Tuesday, we're a church committed to raising godly children. We meet on Tuesday on Zoom, the church without walls. So you don't need to be in Dundee to be part of that meeting. Invite your friends. Make sure your children are part of it. It's 6 p.m. on Tuesday to 7 p.m. Just one solid hour infusing the word of God in the lives of these children. May God bless us as we practice his word and we shall not be stopped in any way because we serve an unstoppable God. Shall we share the benediction together? May the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us lost now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, we shall all the days of my life. Now there in the house of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Go and prosper. God bless you. Okay.